Final Fantasy is a massive series spanning 35 years, multiple consoles, and has many, many spin-offs. Today I'm going to list what I think are all the main series games, which will include the likes of Final Fantasy IV After Years and Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. I won't be including the likes of Dirge of Cerberus, as that is a different genre of game compared to all of the other Final Fantasy games. Each game I will be using the lowest rated score as per Metacritic, however I will give info on um, what the score is for each entry. Lowest score goes first, so here we go with all of the main series Final Fantasy games ranked from worst to best. Number 21. Final Fantasy XIV PC 49% 83% 87% 86% So the latest in the Final Fantasy MMOs this one goes at 21 purely based on the rating it originally got of 49% however I will also admit there are several uh, expansions and the reboot which gives it several different ratings as compared to the other games which all have a single rating for them. So it's gone here on the basis that it's not that it's the worst Final Fantasy game but more that it's a wild card and could go in several different places. Number 20, Final Fantasy IV After Years, iOS, 62%. The sequel to Final Fantasy IV, The After Years, was an episodic game originally launched on mobile devices, before it was ported to the Wii a year later, with a collection on the PSP soon after that. The game itself follows the characters of, four, of Final Fantasy IV, and their descendants 17 years after the events of Final Fantasy IV. Reviews were mixed, with some saying the game was enjoyable though a little dated, whilst others pointed to its reused assets and music as being cheap. Number 19. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII PS3 66% the third game in the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, Lightning Returns changed a lot of what made the game's Final Fantasy. Adding a Majora's Mask time element to the game and a strict schedule to keep to what in, in order to complete the game, reception to the game from reviewers was mixed, with some praising the combat and others criticising the quest system as something similar to the opening of MMOs. Number 18. Final Fantasy 2 Pixel Remaster 77%. The first of the Pixel Remastered collection to feature on this list, Final Fantasy 2 Pixel Remaster was generally well received by critics, with one saying that this is the best version of Final Fantasy 2 currently available, with the original version of the game not coming west until the PS1 version in 2003, it's easy to see how most fans might have missed out on the game originally. Number 17, Final Fantasy 3 Pixel Remaster, 79%. Sticking with the Pixel Remasters, this one again received generally favourable reviews, but nothing lower than 70%. Reviewers stated that again it's a good chance to play through these older games on modern platforms with a fresh coat of paint. Final Fantasy 3 was the first of the Final Fantasy games to feature the job system, a gimmick that has returned to the series a few times over the years. Number 16, Final Fantasy 13 2. 
PS3 and Xbox 360, 79%. The second game of the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, this one featured time travel, which is usually a very divisive concept amongst most people. The game saw Sarah, Lightning's sister, and Noel, who journeyed through time to try to find Lightning, who has gone missing after the events of the first game. Most reviewers were favourable, however the worst review cited easy combat and lots of cutscenes, which is generally a staple of RPGs these days. Lots of cutscenes and lots of story. Number 15 Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remaster 80% The game that launched a series and all its many, many spin-offs. Final Fantasy 1 started the series most familiar trope of the Guardians of Light and the th four elemental crystals which would see Max again and again including the latest entry, Final Fantasy XVI. Reviewers again were favourable with reviewers praising the remaster for its attempts to make the game look shiny and new for a new audience whilst providing some modern tweaks. Number 14 Final Fantasy XV PS4 81% the most modern Final Fantasy game on this list, as of the making of this list. Final Fantasy XV was a divisive title amongst fans, some praising it as the greatest Final Fantasy as its open world for most of the game, others criticising its combat and other features. The Bros Road Trip does however feature great fan service, with the player able to pick up fourth wall breaking music from previous titles. Noctis and Friends got interesting treatment with this one as Square went all in with movies and anime and spin-off titles in order to market the game. Number 13, Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster, 82%. Following the protagonist Bart, we once again have a story including the familiar trope of the four crystals that are this time in danger. The game also heavily featured the job system. Reviewers stated this is a good entry for newcomers to the franchise to jump on and try out this particular game. Reviewers also said, though hardcore fans might not like the menu changes or the pixel graphics. Number 12, Final Fantasy XIII, Xbox 360, 82%. To add to this, the PC version scored massively lower due to problems with running on PC. However, I've gone for the Xbox 360 version because PC launched several years after. The first of the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy and the last one for this list. Final Fantasy XIII is the game that introduces us to Lightning Snow and the gang and heavily features the Falsi in the storyline. Final Fantasy XIII did feature some criticism from fans for its long corridors, some calling it a corridor sim, and also the cap to character progression was a point of contention. Some reviewers said the game was far too simplified with most of the game being able to be beaten with one button press, whilst others preferred the simplicity of the controls. Number 11, Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster, 83%. Yet another Pixel Remaster, Final Fantasy IV follows the story of Cecil and his friend Kane, as they try to stop Goldbirds from stealing the powerful crystals. Final Fantasy IV is often cited as one of the best Final Fantasy games, and the Pixel Remaster reflects this. One sticking point though for reviewers was the font, which is a recurring complaint amongst fans of the series. 
Number 10. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. PSP. 83%. A game that has very recently had a remaster on modern consoles. Today though this entry is focusing on the PSP version. Some fans say this is one of the best games on the PSP and it's easy to see why they say that. The game itself follows Zack, a character mentioned in Final Fantasy VII and takes place before the events of Final Fantasy VII. Critics praise the game saying it's one of the best looking games on the PSP and comparing it to God of War on the system. Number 9 Final Fantasy X 2 PS2 85% The sequel to Final Fantasy X, this game follows Yuna, Riku and new character Pain after the events of Final Fantasy X. The game brought back the job system as well and the story played out through smaller story missions rather than the big chapters the previous game had. Some critics disliked the mission based approach to the game whilst others praised it for Square doing something different and having their first actual sequel to a game. Number 8 Final Fantasy XI PC 85% The first attempt by Square Enix at creating a Final Fantasy MMO Final Fantasy XI started off strong. The game featured a monthly sub and was the first MMORPG to feature crossplay between PS2 and PC. The game took place in the mysterious world of Varnadil and saw players create avatars in order to complete quests and the game's story. Critics praised the game for its graphics and user interface. Number 7 Final Fantasy 7 Remake PS4 87% Final Fantasy 7 is one of the most recognizable games of the PS1 era. So when Square finally announced the remake for PS4, fans rejoiced at the idea. However, there was a big bunch of changes to the story that fans weren't happy with and they were also very vocal about the changes to the combat system going from a turn-based system to a more hack and slash feel. Critics lauded it as a must-buy for fans of the series however, pointed to all the modern changes as a reason to jump on board the franchise. Though there was some criticism for drawing out the initial Midgar story into a 40 to 50 hour full length game when it was originally only a few hours long. Number 6 Final Fantasy 6 Pixel Remaster 88% The last of the pre PS1 era games Final Fantasy 6 is often cited by fans as being one of if not the best games in the franchise. The game itself features a bustling cast of up to 14 characters and has topics such as magical arms races, dictatorships and personal redemption arcs. Praised for its gameplay, graphics and its music, the game was well loved by critics and gamers alike and the Pixel Remaster got the same treatment though the usual complaints of the game's font choice still persisted like the other remasters. Number 5 Final Fantasy VIII PS1 90% The second of the Final Fantasy trio to launch on PS1, Final Fantasy VIII follows protagonist Squall Leonhardt and his life at, a, at the Mercenary Academy, Balan Garden. Featuring a divisive junction system and one of the best minigames in Final Fantasy history in the Triple Triad card game, Final Fantasy VIII was and still is a very divisive title with fans. 
Some pointed to the junction system as a broken way of making the characters overly powerful early game, especially with the card system available, and also the monsters getting stronger with you as main dislikes for the game. Another point that fans didn't like was the story falling apart towards the end as well with nonsense to do with time compression and time travel. Number 4, Final Fantasy 7, PS1, 92%. A lot of people will have thought this game would have come first on this list. However, arguably the most famous Final Fantasy, with some of the most iconic characters in gaming, with Cloud at the forefront of that, it came in 4th place. Final Fantasy VII featured Mercenary Cloud as he sets out to help terrorist group Avalanche defeat the evil corporation Shinra and save the world in the process. The story was well praised as was the jump from not only 2D to 3D, the first of the series, but also the jump from Nintendo to PlayStation as the CDs for the PlayStation were much better for the games in the old cartridge system. Number 3 Final Fantasy X PS2 92% The first of the Final Fantasy games to release on the PS2 and also one of its earliest titles as well. The game follows a young man called Tidus who is thrust from his home world of Xanarkand into the wide world of Spira. There he meets Yuna and accompanies her on her pilgrimage to defeat the big bad Sin. Fans cite this as a good jumping on point for the series as it still has the classic turn based combat system but also featured better graphics and voice acting as well for the first time in the series. Final Fantasy X featured many memorable side quests and mini games such as underwater football game Blitzball, and also has that one meme moment that everybody has done to death. Number 2 Final Fantasy XII PS2 92% The last game of the PS2 era of Final Fantasy games. This one made changes to it that some fans weren't pleased with. The game itself follows Vaughn in the land of Ivalice, which is a recurring name in the franchise, a young adventurer who dreams of being a sky pirate, and features a war between two nations with the neutral nation Vaughn lives in, Dalmasca, stuck in between. The game featured a lot of firsts for the series such as open world, seamless battles, controllable camera and a fully customizable gambit system so that the other party members would fight alongside you, controlled by the AI. And number 1, Final Fantasy 9, PS1, 94%. This one was a surprise for me, as I'm sure it was a surprise for most other people. But Final Fantasy IX is the highest rated mainline Final Fantasy game. It's not to say that it's not an amazing game, because it certainly is. The game itself focuses on honourable scoundrel Zidane, as he aims to kidnap the Princess of Alexandria under the guise of travelling actor's troop Tantalus. The game takes the series back to its roots after the more modern approaches of the previous two games and heavily features many themes such as friendship and the meaning of life itself. And that was every game in the Final Fantasy mainline series ranked worst to best. Do you think any of the games should have come higher in the list, lower in the list? As always these were all scored by Metacritic and aren't my opinions, they are what is the rating for each game 
that the internet says they they are, so maybe they're in the right positions, maybe they're not. Who knows? Which is your favourite Final Fantasy game? Tell us down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.